What's going on everybody? This is Dave with AlexFergus.com, back again today with another product review and product overview of a device that can either help you start a meditation practice or help you take your meditation practice possibly to the next level. What I'm talking about is the Muse 2 meditation headband. I picked up the Muse 2 headband back in February and I've been using it fairly consistently and currently I'm on a 123 day streak using the Muse 2. So I've had a lot of experience using the hardware and the accompanying app. So today we're going to take a look at the hardware, how it works, then take a look at the app that goes along with the hardware, then come back here for some pros, some cons, and some final thoughts on whether the Muse 2 is a good product to either help you establish or help take your meditation practice even further. So without any further ado, let's take it down to the table and take a look at the Muse 2. Okay, so this is how the Muse 2 comes when you get it. Uh, it comes in this box just like this, and it's got this nice little pull tab right here that you just open. And there is the headband itself inside there with a quick start guide. So let's take the headband out and take a look at this a little bit more closely here. Put this off to the side. So as you can see there, the, those kind of uh, copper things right there, those are the EEG or elef electroencephalograph sensors. And then, let's see if we can see it on the side there. Actually, it's going to be right there between those two last on the right. That is the PPG pulse oximeter sensor that reads your pulse rate and your respiration rate. Now, to turn the device on, you simply just press that button there, and it lights up. It'll automatically pair with your phone. I haven't had to actually go into my Bluetooth settings to find it, to pair it with the app. It just automatically does it, and when you're ready to turn it off, you just press it once for about a second. Device powers off. To charge the device, there is a micro USB port right there. You just plug it in, and I just leave mine plugged in overnight, and it's good for about a week of 20-minute sessions. And to adjust the headband, you just pull like that, kind of like a pair of headphones on each side. But as you can see, the, the little sensors are attached to this little springy thing that goes against your forehead. It does feel rather fragile, and I'm kind of afraid that possibly this might pull away at some point. So uh, it is lightweight, and it is fragile. And I should also point out that these rubber things that go behind your ear also contain sensors as well. So it's real important to have a nice snug fit, not too tight, but you want to get those around the backs of your ears and the front here, those sensors, Nice, nice on the center of your forehead. So, also in the box you get a quick start guide. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And it is, so you basically make sure your headband is charged, make sure you've got Bluetooth enabled, download the app, and create an account. Pretty standard fare. Connect your Muse, tap start session, put on your Muse and headphones, Calibrate, meditate, and review. So there's not a whole lot to the quick start guide. It's literally a quick start guide. And then inside the box, the last thing you're going to get is a micro USB cable with a nice little uh, Velcro strap there. So that is everything that comes in the box for the Muse 2. There's not a whole lot going on there. It's very simple, very straightforward, just like the device and the application itself. So, that's it. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the Muse Meditation app itself and all the different meditation modes because there's a lot more to this product if you go and take a look at the app itself. So with that, let's take a look at the app. Okay, so here we are at the home screen for the Muse Meditation app itself. So, when you're on the home screen, you can see you know, when you first started using Muse, you can see your current streak, and you can see all of the different types of meditations they have. <clears throat> now, the first one, the little multicolored wheel there is all. You got mind, heart, body, breath, guided, and just a timed meditation. And then right below that, you got your meditation history, 
and you can go back through and scroll back through the days here going back 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 and then if you want a more detailed look at your meditation history you can open that up and it goes day by day and so let me see here um so on friday june 28th i had <clears throat> a 15 minute session and i scored 96 percent calm and there it is it can pull up the actual session itself and I can see that I had zero active minutes, 34 seconds in neutral, and 14 minutes and 26 seconds calm. I can expand the graph, and you can see a more detailed view and scroll through. <clears throat> Looks like I was pretty calm between 10, 50, and 13 minutes or so. It was really nice and calm there. And all that, <clears throat> those blue things across the bottom, those are the the uh, the birds chirping that you can that you hear when your mind is uh, in a calm state. As you can see, I earned 166 birds with 2,632 muse points. Now I can click on that and it'll give me some details about what those points mean, uh, what those recoveries, I don't have any recoveries on this session. Then you can see, uh, gives you an explanation of the birds there. Okay, so those are the, the awards that I got and the stats. You can also have a journal entry, optional if you wanna enter one of those in. Uh, okay, here's a guided session. So a guided session is just like the heart session, the breath session, or the mind session. <clears throat> it also lets you see a graph of how active or calm your mind is. And let's see what award. Oh, uh-huh, I got an award there. Two birds per minute, okay. So that's your meditation history screen. So go, let's go back to the beginning here. Click on me. So here's your <clears throat> all meditations. So we can see that I've spent 2,838 total minutes. Um, I've got almost half a million muse points and 26,000 some odd birds, 275 recoveries. And then here down here below that are your goals and your challenges. So I'm not doing so hot this week on my goal of getting two, almost two and a half hours of meditating in. Um, I've been pretty busy, but you know, maybe I'll do a longer session tonight and try and reach that goal. I don't know. That's a, almost a 35 minute meditation session to make that up. And then you got, <clears throat> you can open that up and you can see the purple ones are the one are the weeks that I made my goal and the blue one are the kind of greenish ones. I did not meet my goal and challenges. Okay. So my next challenge is to do a 40 minute session. That is a bit of a stretch and I've been stuck on that challenge for quite a while now. Um, so you can see I've already completed these challenges here and they start you off pretty easy. Like the very first one is do four sessions in one week and each session has a little breakdown of what that session and, uh, challenge entails. Okay. And we're going to go back and then you've got your milestones underneath your challenges. So my last milestone was 150 calm sessions. I got that last week and 150 sessions period, I got that two weeks ago. So we can scroll all the way back, all the way back to the very beginning of time of using the Muse five months ago. Comma session, 25 minutes. Wow, that's pretty good actually from way back then. Okay, so when you wanna meditate, you click on the middle button and there you go. So you can select your length. You, so you can select from predetermined, you know, 15, 20, 25, or you can actually select an individual minute, how many minutes you actually want, like 19 or 21 minutes, if you want to do a time that's not already listed there. Um, you can select your soundscape. You've got beach, rainforest, desert, and city park, along with ambient music. I prefer the rainforest one. It's actually the one that you know, you start off using when you very first get the app open and you start meditating with this. So I kind of go back to Rainforest quite a bit. Um, city Park's an interesting one that I like a lot too. It actually does kind of sound like a city park. It's kind of kind of a neat, neat to soundscape. You got buses kind of going by. <clears throat> and then exercise. Now I'm progressed far enough through the Muse app that I'm no longer using the exercise. That's why I have no exercise instruction selected. But when you first get the Muse device, you're probably want to kind of want to click on the first one, Muse Essentials, and they walk you through uh, sort of an introduction, training, sensation of breath, and all of these Muse Essentials 
um, these little mini lessons, as I like to call them. Um, they don't run during the session itself. They're, they all are presentations that you watch and listen to before starting your session. So they all, each one of them introduces a new concept or new skill or new technique that you can use in your meditation to take with you into the, um, the session that you're about to do. And they do teach you quite a few fundamentals of meditation. So if you're new to meditating, I think that's, that this is a great, great option there. Um, Heart-centered mindfulness. So you can, I haven't bothered going through all the rest of these, but they, uh, they work a lot, of, they work a lot the same way that the introduction to Muse or the, the um, Muse Essentials do. So they introduce a, a topic or a, you know, a technique, and then they let you practice that in a session. Um, Deepak Chopra has got a few kind of, you know, introductory kind of guides before you start a session. I've listened to all three of them. They're usually about a minute and a half to two minutes long. They're not that long. Um, E-Mindful Life. life. I, I did the first two. I haven't done the last one yet, but maybe I'll get around to it. So that's what those are. And then um, when you hit start session, um, I don't have the device on me right now because I'm not actually going to be meditating. What will happen is that the sensors will all um, try to get a good signal and you'll see the bars for each sensor as a different color. And then when, actually, you know what? I can just go ahead and turn the device on and put it on my head and I'll show you. Because I don't think I can adequately describe the, uh, the calibration process without Okay, so here we go. So as you can see, each one of the sensors is light, lit up. Okay. Oh, here we go. For this calibration, find a comfortable position and close your eyes. Yep, here we go. Okay. Take a deep breath. So now it's going to try and calibrate and establish a baseline. Anyway, so as you can see, that's what happens during the calibration is it's trying to set a baseline for your mental state to compare how your brain changes during the session itself. So ideally you want your mind to be as just normal, just meh as possible. You don't want to overthink or have too much mental activity. And you also don't want to already start meditating ahead of time during the calibration. You just want a nice baseline. Um, and then under settings, uh, you can, your name, email, about, uh, session settings so yeah what i've done actually is i've turned off the birds you can see that right there i've turned off the birds i've actually found after using the muse for over 100 and some days just straight that the birds actually became a distraction and i kept thinking oh i'm calm i'm calm or i'm not calm i'm not calm and so i just turned the birds off but in the beginning the bird thing was actually pretty helpful so you can go down here feedback you can sync this with your health if you've got an iOS device, so it'll show up as Mindful Minutes in your health app. Um, and that is pretty much it. Um, let's take a look at some of the um, guided meditations here. Um, so when you want to choose a different meditation, you just click on the associated icon from the meditate, the middle meditate button. So I want to do heart or I want to do body lungs or breath or guided so yeah under under guided there's different courses there's a starter series and then there's uncovering happiness there's all these different guided sessions and then if you want to do just a one-off guided session there's collections and you've got be healthy oh yep i'm doing a beta test right now for the uh, the guided sessions so that's what that was. So you can do sleep, be awesome, with happiness, work, performance, confidence, day to night, travel, quick breaks, long breaks, and just for you, or just for entrepreneurs. So there's all of those. As you can see, stress has 18 different, different guided sessions. So there we go. I've done the Calm the Mind one. It seemed like a pretty decently put together, good recording, good audio quality. So let's take a look at the different uh, beyond just the brain meditation or the mind meditation. So heart meditation is interesting. What it will do is it'll use the PPG or pulse oximeter sensor on the Muse 2 device, and it'll read your heartbeats and play your heartbeats back 
as if they were a drum beat in your ears. So you hear your heartbeats as a drum, and the idea is to slow your heart rate down <clears throat> by hearing your own heartbeat being played back to you through your ears. So that's a pretty neat meditation method. Um, the body meditation uses an accelerometer built into the Muse 2, and the idea behind this meditation is to see if you can keep your body in a calm, still position without too much movement of the body. Um, the breath meditation, you have to sync your breathing rate because the PPG or the pulse oximeter will also read your respiration rate. So the idea is you want to sync your breath. I think it's a four, seven, something, four on the inhale, seven on the exhale. You want to match the, the, uh, the, the rate that the soundscape is trying to get you to follow. So when you're in sync with the breath rate that the app wants you to do, the noise written, the noise level is quieter. And when you get out of that, that synced breathing, it gets louder. Same thing with all the other meditation modes. When you're in a calm state with the mind meditation, when you're calm, the sound, the sound levels drop dramatically and the birds start chirping. Um, same thing with the heart. When you um, slow your heart rate down, the ambient sounds in the background also get quieter. So that's how you know that you're getting into that calm state is when the sounds get quieter. So it's kind of an interesting way. They call it biofeedback um, because you're training your body to behave differently based on feedback you're getting from your own body. So in a way, with the mind meditation, you're actually listening to your the sounds of your brain in a way. The more active your brain is, the, uh, <clears throat> the more noise it's going to make. So yeah, that is pretty much it for the Muse Meditation app itself. It's really a simple app. I haven't had any problems with crashing or it being buggy at all. Um, there's not really a whole lot to it. It's pretty straightforward. And I think almost anybody could figure out how to use this app. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, let's go back up top and take a look at some pros, some cons, and some final thoughts on the device. Okay, so we've had an up-close look at the Muse 2 headband and what comes in the box. We've also taken a look at the app and all of the different meditation modes that go along with the Muse 2 meditation headband. So, what are some pros? What are some cons? Well, I think I like the fact that it's very easy to operate. There really is only one button on the device. You just hit the button, put it on, and you're good to go. Um, there's no fiddling around. It just works, at least for me, right out of the box. I haven't had any connectivity issues. Um, I think the app is very responsive. It's not glitchy. It doesn't freeze or crash. So that's also another pro. It's easy to use. It's very simple and streamlined. I think that's a pro. Um, I like the guides, uh, the, the goals, the milestones, and the achievements. Those kind of help keep the meditation practice feeling fresh. Um, I think the battery life on the device is excellent. You know, I charge this guy about once a week and I get about seven 20 minute sessions. So, you know, I charge it once a week and it's good to go for a 20 minute session every morning. So that's pretty darn good. Um, I like the fact that there are third party apps that you can use with the Muse 1 and Muse 2 headbands, such as Muse Monitor. Um, you know, that can help uh, take your meditation just to that next level. You know, you can play a musical instrument or maybe do some stretching or try alternate styles of meditation and find out, you know, what's going on up in your up in your head with the uh, Muse Monitor software. Um, I think that the inclusion of guided sessions that Muse is working on integrating right now is a good positive thing. I think there's a lot of people that are already currently using guided meditations that would love to use a Muse meditation headband that reads their brain waves. Um, I think that it's comfortable and it's not bulky to wear. Um, that's a pro, but it's also a con, and we'll get to that in a second. And I think that the robust online community, as far as the Facebook group at least uh, is concerned, is very responsive, very active, and the company seems to participate quite a bit in the Facebook group itself. So, you know, let's look at some of the cons. Um, I'd say because the device is so light, it does feel fragile. And I think that, you know, you should include a case when you buy the 
the headband. You know, I kind of scrounged around and I found, you know, a, a headphone case and I've been using that to store my Muse 2 headband in. And for the price, which is also a con of $199 for Muse 1 or $249 for Muse 2, I kind of think that you should get a case. I think the default soundscapes are nice, but I also think that they should be rotated out and new ones added. Um, because after using the Muse device for, you know, a couple of months now, I have to say that the stock default soundscapes kind of get kind of stale after a while. So I'd like to see Muse try to come up with some new ones and possibly rotate those through. So that's a con. Um, once again, like I said, the cost, $199, $249, both of those are pretty expensive. And, you know, a lot of people might not be able to justify spending that kind of money when meditation itself is basically free. So that's a con. Um, you can't use your own music or your own soundscapes with the Muse app. Um, some people might consider that a con. I do as, I do as well. I, I would love to be able to use some of my own nature background music or some chanting or some Tibetan bowls or just whatever you know you want to help get you in the meditative kind of mindset. And I also think that the ability to export your, your session graphs out of the app uh, would be an awesome feature, but it's not there. So that's also a con. So we've taken a look at the pros, we've taken a look at the cons, and overall, I think it's a really good device. The hardware and the software both just work, and they work seamlessly. Um, if you want to learn more and get a more detailed look at the Muse 2, there's going to be a write-up on Alex's blog at alexfergus.com. So with that said, this is Dave for alexfergus.com. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. See you around.